It's my pleasure to introduce Sister Genti tonight. Sister Genti's been meditating for over 50 years and she's traveled widely and worked with people on all levels of society um, from the UN to Aboriginals and I've had the pleasure of being with her in both cases at different times of my own journey. And Sister Genti um, is going to be speaking on heart-mindedness, thinking less and loving more. I think we're in a society today where we do overthink everything um, and we strategize and over-strategize everything. And so learning to live from your heart. So stepping outside of your own head Stop overthinking everything, stop keeping the head busy and learning to be centered in the heart. And we hope that she'll be exploring some of the things of what it means to fear less and feel more, doubt less, trust more, judge less, accept more, worry less and accomplish more so that we can busy quieten our busy mind and learn to live from our heart perspective. Um, just before I hand over to Sister Genti, she, um, Genti Ben will be speaking for the next half an hour, 40 minutes, and she will be doing a meditation after that. Then she'll be taking any questions that you would like to send. So please do send the questions through the question and answer link that you have received. And we will be then putting those questions to Jinti Ben on your behalf. Jinti Ben, over to you. Thank you. Thanks for that warm welcome. And I'd like to greet everybody who's watching and listening with an expression that most of you are familiar with, Om Shanti, a greeting of peace to my sisters and my brothers. And yes, it's very much a subject that's needed today to think less and to love more, to doubt less and to trust more, um, especially in these crazy times. I know that it's not always to accept these things that Arthi has just mentioned or that I'm picking up on. But really, if I'm just living in my head and not with my heart, then life is not a very happy experience. And I firmly believe that we came as pilgrims on this planet to be able to experience the joy of living and to be able to experience love in our lives. But we seem to have moved very far away from this. I remember somebody saying to me once that we were meant to actually use things and love people. But now it feels as if we love things and we use people. And so it's a sad state of affairs if that's what it's come to. Because as a human being, a being that's filled with peace and love and joy, what I would like in my life is to be able to not just experience this myself, but to share this experience with everyone who I'm connected with. And so I wonder why all this is happening. And I think that it's because we've lost touch with ourselves. And you'd be surprised to hear me saying this because you'd say, of course I know myself, of course I'm in touch with myself. And I would suggest that we don't actually either know ourselves very well nor do we love ourselves very well. And we're not really in touch with what my own heart and feelings are about because we're too much in our heads. We are thinking a lot, analyzing a lot and looking at all sorts of external things, but we've forgotten the practice of going inside. And so, if tonight there's a catchphrase that you'd like to take away with you, I'd suggest it's the term, the inner journey. Inner space is offering you the possibility of going on an inner journey 
to discover the space that you have within yourself. And if you think about it, how often is it that you actually feel something that another individual is saying rather than just listen with your ears? There's a whole art of listening. And if I don't listen first to myself, I'm not able to be in touch with myself. But also, if I don't listen to others, I'm not actually in touch with them either. And in little wonder that life becomes quite dry and it's not such a happy experience. COVID has brought families together in the sense that we can't be outside a great deal. It's at the moment now too cold. We can't go to things that we used to go to. We can't do the things that we used to do. We find ourselves at home within that bubble, within that family. And sometimes there's a bit of friction that starts to happen. There isn't that space. There isn't that emotional and mental distance to be able to be away and do other things and then come back and enjoy family. It's like we've been put on top of each other. And one of the things that's happened is that, yes, we've got to understand each other a little better. But maybe another thing that's happened is that we've got on each other's nerves. Sometimes that too happens. And so what is it that I need to do now? A huge part of the UK is in lockdown. And even the part that's not in lockdown is in high alert. And so at this moment, I think it's a special moment to go on this inner journey and truly connect with the being that I am. So many of the things that we used to look for outside, for example, is a very natural thing to look for love outside to look for happiness outside. But both of these things are actually, surprisingly, deep within ourselves. And the discovery is to be able to find these within the self so that then we are not looking out there and then having our expectations being let down. But also, it's an amazing experience to be in COVID and the stress of lockdown and everything that's going on, but to be able to know that I don't need to depend on going out, doing this, doing that, doing the other. All of those things were distractions. And now what time and COVID are telling me is that I have to go on a different journey, one that's taking me inwards. And when I go on that in a journey, maybe I'll see things that I don't like about myself. Maybe I'll see things that I appreciate a great deal about myself. But the beauty of going on this inner journey is that I realize that there are both sides to me, the same individual, the being that I am. I have the sides that I myself don't want to have. And then I have the side of beauty and very special gifts that um, I just have had. I've received them. I haven't worked for them, but I came with them maybe, or they developed along my journey somewhere along the line. But I have both of these things. And once I begin to accept me as I am, with all the faults and weaknesses and defects fit together with all the specialities, the qualities and the special things that I have that I can share and offer. Once I can see both of these things, then I come to a state of inner acceptance of who I am. And in that acceptance of who I am, I begin another journey. I begin the journey of actually valuing myself and loving myself. And this has nothing to do with narcissism or with egoism. 
I'm not being egoistic, but I have to learn to love myself. And very few of us know how to do that. We're used to the swings, sometimes inferior, sometimes superior, but neither of them are healthy. Inferiority, and I don't recognize or acknowledge the gifts that I carry within myself, and so I'm not actually able to express them and use them in my life. But also that state where I feel I'm a victim, I'm hard done by, others are taking advantage of me, others are not giving me an opportunity. All of this is actually not true. I have to take responsibility for who I am and what I am and what it is I can do or not do. And truly it's up to me, nobody else around me at all. And so when I start looking inside and I see the defects, but also the virtues, and each one of us does have those virtues, I begin to approach a level of stability. I know there's things that are not good, I'll deal with them. There are things that are good and I'm grateful for those. I'm grateful to God, I'm grateful to the universe for having given me those. So no superiority, why? Because today I might be superior to this one, but tomorrow there'll be somebody who's higher up the ladder than me. And usually the superiority thing has nothing to do with who I am. It's everything to do with external things. Um, the color of my skin, maybe. I feel superior because of that. My age, I'm young, I have my life ahead of me. Maybe I feel superior, but no, maybe I've got lots of gray hair and maybe that's given me a lot of experience and this is the reward, the result. And so I carry that experience, but there'll always be somebody who has less and somebody who has more. Possessions, again, same thing. Somebody who has more than I have. And if I keep striving for more and more and more, there'll never be enough. And so I can never have that state in which I feel superior but equally, to have the state of feeling inferior is not healthy at all. But getting to know myself as that inner being, we started with a statement of Om Shanti, Om, I am. So who am I? I am the inner being, Shanti, I am the being of peace. And so in this awareness of who I truly am, as a being of peace, I begin the journey of getting to know myself and loving myself. I value myself, why? Because I truly carry values within my own inner world. The things that I'm looking for outside are not outside. They are actually within me. Love is part of the soul peace is part of the soul, joy, truth, all of these things are part of the soul itself. But because I've been so focused on the external form, I haven't understood that. And so I spent time and money and energy in searching for all of these things outside. And at the end of the day, or maybe after two days, there's a disappointment. But going inside, and knowing that I am that being within and I carry those values within me makes a huge difference. It changes my perspective on the subject of love. Love is not just a fleeting feeling that comes and goes. Love is not just an emotion that erupts and then subsides. No, love is actually part of the being that I am. It is intrinsic. It's there within me. You know, if you think about what is the body made up of, and you give a list of carbohydrates and proteins and all of these things, which is all true, but that's related to the body. But what is the inner being, the soul composed of? 
what are the ingredients that actually make up the soul. And it's these values that I mentioned earlier, the love, the peace, the truth, the joy, the purity. This is who I am. And when I know this, and I begin to feel it and experience it, then yes, I say thank you. Because I didn't realize that it was this easy just to go inside and connect with the truth of who I am and find those treasures within and to know that my value doesn't depend on what I'm doing, what I'm achieving in competition with somebody else or in terms of profit margin and how much I make, how much is that, do I have in the bank or the possessions, none of those things. My value depends on the qualities that I carry within myself and the extent to which I'm able to use these qualities in my life. And so look in the mirror and see this shining star that you are, the inner being of light, the soul. And each day, morning and night, as you look at yourself, not just through the eyes, but looking here, let yourself feel your own value, your own specialities. And you can truly smile at yourself and say, yes, I appreciate you. I respect you. And maybe further down the line, you'll even learn to say, yes, I love you. And this is absolutely vital because whatever is inside is what's projected outside. If I don't value and love myself, how is it possible for me to love my neighbor? And that's the instruction we've been given for millennia. Love thy neighbor as you would love yourself. And because we don't love ourselves, we very rarely love our neighbors. There's always some sort of tension between us and them and whoever them might be, near neighbors, far neighbors, doesn't matter. But I'm not able to love them in the same way. And I'm talking about a love which is inclusive, not just a love that's based on biological connection, parents, siblings, and so on, or even just friends who I've known for a long time and connect with very easily. But this is a love which is for every human being, which is very different. Yes, I can talk about the romantic love and the intimate love and the biological love in just a few minutes. But I just want to say that when I do truly experience who I am as a being that carries love within the self, it means that my heart is open and I'm able to share that love with whoever it is I meet, irrespective of their color, their caste, their creed, whatever their orientation may be, whatever else is happening for them or not happening for them. But I can connect with a being with whom I have an eternal bond because we're one family. I also believe deeply that there is a creator, there is one who is divine, the one above. And because we belong to the creator and we are the same family, there's a bond that links us together through eternity. And so although I might think that, well, that person has nothing to do with me, not true, we are one family. And then let me speak a little bit about our relationships on the human level, because yes, theoretically, I can love the whole human family. But today, I have connections with my parents, my children, my siblings, my friends. And the quality of love is different in each aspect. As a child, my parents' love is one in which there is sustenance and warmth and care and nurture. And as a parent, I have to ask myself the question, to what extent am I able to give 
that love and care and sustenance and nurture. In some cases, I remember that I had a lot of it in my childhood. Am I now able to give the same to my children? On another level, I might have been deprived and never had that experience. And so can I look at that feeling of what it was like? And can I now fill myself with so much love from the one above, from the source of love, that I am able to change my own experience of childhood, but now turn it around 180 degrees and give my children the love that I was denied for whatever reason. But today, if I'm able to give that love, it's because I have a connection with the source. And so from the source that love reaches me and it's able to reach out. I know that very often it's the other way that if I've had a childhood in which I was abused, then probably I become a perpetrator and abuse my children. But if today you're watching this, then it means that you're already on the path of realization and transformation of the self. And so I think you can understand deeply the trauma of the past, but now know that you can turn it around and you can take the love that the divine has to offer, fill yourself with that so that you now can give your children a very different experience and one they will love you for, but also one in which you've created their future in a very powerful, beautiful way so that you truly have given them a very strong foundation for a good start in life. My friends, yes, do I have the loyalty that I would like to have? Do I have the care for them that I would like to have? You know, the golden rule, let me do unto others what I would like them to do for me. And so am I able to do that? What sort of friendship is it that I would desire? Can I be that sort of friend? Well, maybe I can learn. I can learn from the one above because in my understanding, the source of pure love is the divine. And when I'm filled with this pure love, it translates into love in every aspect of my life so that it's love for my parents, it's love for my children, it's love for my friends, it's love for my teacher, it's love for my pupils, if I happen to be a teacher, it's love for my human family. And so if today I experience that unconditional, non-judgmental love that comes to me from the divine, I'm able to share that with my friends no expectations, no demands, no conditions, but just simply friendship and affection in which we are there for each other at any moment. And so human relationships today have become the cause of great stress. That's what the world tells me. Because whenever we've had workshops in any place, the response that comes back is that, it's relationships that cause the greatest stress. But that's because we become empty, we become bereft. And so in that state of neediness, I want, I need, and I'm grabbing, I'm taking. Now, the inner journey and knowing that love is there within my own inner being and through the connection with the divine, the warmth of God's love for me opens up my heart and I can feel the love that's there waiting to emerge and be expressed. And so let God's light, the warmth and the love shine on you through meditation, through your inner connection. And you'll feel that the love that was there within that you didn't access before is now reachable. It's now there and available for you to use. It means that in 
every action and interaction. Now, I'm not wanting to take, but now I have an abundance within myself. And so I'm not even thinking I'm going to give love, but it just happens. It's a natural flow of energy that reaches out and it could be expressed not with a hug or a kiss, but it's expressed with care, with compassion, with kindness, with taking that extra step, going that extra mile to be able to help another, whatever their need may be. And so the manifestation of pure love is all of these things, the generosity that I have, the forgiveness that I have. In filling myself with the love of the divine, I find that because my heart has stretched and grown, forgiveness comes more easily, more naturally. But it starts with even being able to forgive myself. Sometimes we tell God our mistakes and we want God's forgiveness. And I know that compassion and love are the intrinsic qualities of God. God is the ocean, the unlimited source of these attributes. So God loves me and God forgives me. But am I able to forgive myself and move on? And if I can learn to forgive myself, learn from my mistakes, not just say sorry and repeat and repeat, but truly understand deeply and then love myself enough to forgive myself and let the lesson learned from the past be with you and the story finish forever. If I can do that for myself, I can also then have the capacity to be able to do that for others. Otherwise, we hold on to the past and imagine if I'm holding on to this chair and I want to move forward, how can I do that? Am I going to take the chair with me? So we hold on to incidents from the past, but it's a time in which I have to learn to be able to forgive and forget and find freedom for myself. I'm not doing them a favor. I'm finding freedom, so it's doing myself a favor, and then I can move on. I want to touch on another subject where sometimes we feel that a person needs our love, and we're trying to give them love, but it's like there's a block that's there, and I'm not able to get through. So what do I do at that moment? Do I just say, forget it. I've tried and tried and nothing works now. It's up to them. Well, maybe it's time to explore this a little bit more deeply and ask the question, maybe that wall that has come up is because there's been a lot of hurt. Maybe it's because the person's been deceived. Maybe They've lost their trust. And so it's difficult for them to accept love at this moment. And when I begin to think about it in this way and feel for them with my heart, then I think, well, is it possible for me to be an instrument to continue to give love and respect to this individual so that they're able to finally know that yes, I truly am there for them. And maybe just like a stone in water, if there's a stone by a waterfall or by running water anywhere, you won't find a stone that has rough edges. Even a stone is able to become smooth and all the rough edges have been washed away just simply by the gentle running water that it's been exposed to over a period of time. And so if stones can melt, then surely human hearts can also definitely melt. But let me continue to give them that care, that attention, that respect, the love that they need, so that at some point, 
Yes, that wall will have melted and the love will reach them and they will turn around. And I've seen that happen in certain cases. And so I can't ever become hopeless about somebody and say, oh, they're always like that. They'll never change. Well, if I've changed, I know that others can change too. And so there's always that distinct possibility. Another thing that I want to mention is that not only is it important to have love for my immediate family or all my friends, but also to think about the human family and the suffering of the human family at this moment. And it's difficult to think about how to help the whole wide world on a physical level because there's too much illness, there's too much sorrow, there's too much deprivation, and everything is in the hands of 1% of the world. It's not even 2080. Um, wealth is actually controlled today by 1%. But yes, 20% may be living life sort of comfortably. For how long, we're not sure, but at the moment it's manageable. But 80% of the world is truly, truly suffering. The only thing I can do at this moment, because it's beyond my capacity to feed everyone, to give everyone shelter, to give everyone what they need, but what I can do is send them loving thoughts. It's possible to reach human hearts with the power of God's love through yoga, meditation. It's a practice that we have, and I know that definitely it reaches people. Um, if somebody is sick and you send them, not just your own loving thoughts, but loving thoughts and God's remembrance, there's a turnaround and they begin to feel that comfort and they're able to move away from pain and afterwards they tell you about it. But whether you get a report and feedback or you don't, the important thing is to know that vibrations are real. Vibrations are invisible, but they're tangible. You can feel them. You walk into a room and the room is empty, but there's a vibration that's been left behind by whatever happened previously that you can pick up. Good things happened in that room and you feel the lightness and the joy still pervading that room. And just before you entered that room, there was maybe aggression and sorrow. Well, you'll pick that up too. The burden, the heaviness will be felt there. And so what we're doing is in the awareness of the being that I am, with that state of inner peace and love for the self, being in that right frequency, I'm able to connect with the being who is the source of love. And as I connect, that love not only reaches me, but that love is able to reach out and touch many, many others. And so if I can do something practical to help another human being, let me do that, of course. But if the only thing I can do is to send out my thoughts of God's love to people in need. It will touch them and it will give them hope. Because when human hearts lose hope, what can you do any further for someone? But if love is able to ignite hope in their hearts, that's been an act of compassion and kindness, a true manifestation of love. But I'd also like to suggest that we can send out our love to all living creatures. We can express our love to all living creatures by all acts of violence and cruelty against them so that we definitely don't put our knife and fork into them, but rather we allow them the dignity of their freedom and their life. But also think about nature 
on the one side, we'll all say, oh, I love the beauty of the mountains, the beauty of the ocean, the forests. But what have we done to nature? We've actually exploited nature as if it were our property. It's not, we didn't make it, it's here. And it's here for us to be stewards and to take care of nature, not to exploit and aggress nature. And so can I now learn to truly love nature and not just be a consumer, not just to keep taking from nature, but now to be able to have respect for nature and let me walk lightly on the earth so that it's not a heavy footprint in which I'm simply taking, but rather let me send good vibrations to nature at this moment so that nature is also able to benefit from peace and love and return to its state of beauty and bounty because at the moment everything is now becoming scarce and it's because we have aggressed nature but let us turn that around too with the power of love not just thinking what can I do but actually learning to have respect and love. I hope that you can love yourself and take God's love and share that with everyone who you're in connection with. Om Shanti. Let's have a few minutes of meditation and experience what it is to take that love from the divine. Sitting comfortably, turning inwards. I hold the awareness of myself as the inner being. And in this awareness of peace and light, I connect with the source, the supreme, the being of light and love. And the power of God's love energizes me. And the power of God's love heals the soul. God's love transforms the soul God's love liberates the soul God's love uplifts the soul God's love allows the soul to move forward to its highest potential. And the love reaches out to my human family, igniting hope in their hearts The love reaches out to all forms of life, assuring them of safety and life. And holding this awareness of love My thoughts return to the moment here and now, but now carrying this experience within myself.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, there's a couple of questions that have come in already. So the first one is, how do we teach children who are victims of abuse and injustice to be happy? Um, very good question, because there's a lot of that around now. And I think you just have to give them so much love that they can feel that they're in a safe space where they can learn to feel protected because at the moment they just don't have that trust in anyone I suppose because they never felt safe and so our love for them has to be such that they feel safe and protected and then I think beyond that comes the state of happiness I think it's very important that they're given that stability and security and know that you're there for them. Thank you. Um, the second question is, I would like to ask how I could let go of my anxiety and anger that comes with disappointment from people I care about the most. I have a tendency to overthink about whatever happens to me. But above all, I struggle to forget. I'm told that I'm kind and loving, but I have a side to me that comes in the way of most of my relationships. I think it's very important that you learn to meditate because the whole process of meditation is being able to see your thoughts and to be able to channel your thoughts away from a mundane level of consciousness to a higher level. And if you can try this out and maintain that awareness of high thinking, pure thinking for a minute, two minutes, three minutes, I think that that will give you a flavor of what is possible in human life. Um, we don't realize the value of our thoughts and we don't realize that everything actually begins there with the way in which I think. And so if I get a glimpse of the truth that yes, thoughts are so powerful and you can experiment with it for, as I said, a minute, two minutes, three minutes, once you understand the power of thoughts, even through your own little experiment, you'll understand that it's important for me to keep track of what's going on in my mind, not only during meditation. The meditation period is the experiment through which I realize the power of my mind. But then further, to remind myself again and again of that inner being and to come back to that inner state of peace. And for just a short while, don't have any expectations of the people around you. The good that you've done is never going to be lost. It's there fixed. But now at this moment for you to have expectations of them or disappointments is, is not going to be useful for you. At this moment, just focus on what you need to do inside yourself. And I don't mean cutting off from your family at all. Um, but what I'm saying is just interact with them, seeing them as shining stars, seeing them also as souls. And you'll find that it makes a huge difference in your interaction with them. Literally just this one simple practice of seeing them as souls and it'll turn things around. But start the journey and yes, you'll get to the stage where you can deal with your anger, you'll be able to deal with your um, overstretching of the mind, and you'll learn how beautiful it is to have space between the thoughts. As you learn to slow down the speed of your thinking, then that space of silence is very beautiful. And when you've experienced it, you're going to want to continue that experiment further and further. Thank you. The next question is, is your belief in God faith-based or experiential? 
Um, when I started my journey of Raj Yoga, I wasn't sure whether I believed in a God or not, because um, the things that I'd been exposed to in childhood and early teens um, were quite contradictory. Things from Catholicism and the Anglican teachings, but also Hinduism. And I couldn't make sense of any of this. And so I'd set aside the subject of God. But when I came to the path of meditation when I was 19, when I understood who I am, the soul, then the next day, and I had a fantastic experience of the soul. I, I really did, that was instant. Just experiencing myself as that being of light detached from the body. And then the next day, when the subject of God was introduced, it sounded very logical that just as the soul is an infinitesimal spark of light, the supreme being is also the same. But the difference that souls get into the whole cycle of birth and death and so on, and God is the one who's out of that. And so God's qualities are forever constant. And human souls gain those qualities and lose those qualities, and they go through flux. And so when I was, it was suggested that in the awareness of the soul, I connect with this being. I tried that, and to my very pleasant surprise, it really did feel that I was receiving something in return for my attention on that being of light. So I didn't start meditation as a believer, but within a short while, my own experiences made me believe. Thank you. Um, the next question is, how can you give love or well wishes to someone who is insulting you or your values, both in the moment and afterwards? I think it depends a lot on what is my connection with them. Um, which means that if it's not a long-standing deep relationship or intimate connection, then whatever they say to you, you can ignore and just, you know, that's them, nothing to do with me. Um, when it's a close relationship and one that is very much part of your life and you can't just ignore it and run away or leave it behind and go away somewhere, then I think at first you just need to build up your own inner power, your own inner capacity to where you believe in yourself and you're able to have that value for yourself and you're able to take God's power through your meditation and then at an appropriate moment, you actually confront that individual and just say very politely, I want to have a conversation. And then you work it out. A dialogue needs to happen. If it's persistent and there is actually no validity for the things that are being said, if you maintain your dignity and peace, and engage in a conversation, then you can make the other person aware that whatever has been tolerated up to now is okay, but you're not willing to take this any further. That you really would like to see a change in the dynamics and you want to have a relationship which is based on mutual respect. And I think that your dignity and your inner power can help you make that statement very openly and firmly. And I think that can bring about a shift. And if it doesn't, then I think you have to ask yourself the question, why should I have to tolerate this? Do I need to stay in this relationship? Or is it now a signal that I've tried, 
and it's not working and I need to find an alternative. I think you've answered the next question, but you may want to um, expand on it. I'm not sure. Um, the question is, I want to set boundaries with people, but I'm not sure how this will affect me and my soul. Is it good to set boundaries? I think it's absolutely vital to set boundaries. Um, you can't just become a doormat and let people do as they wish, when they wish, what they wish. That's not what human relationships are about. But it does need inner strength. And that power comes from meditation through the connection with God. And when I have that inner strength and respect for myself and value for myself, then I can speak to that person and set the boundaries and say, these are the boundaries that cannot be crossed any longer. Um, but it needs that dignity in which I'm not willing to let somebody snatch that away from me. And so maintain my own dignity and engage with respect, not with anger. If I begin with anger, I've lost the plot already and I'm not going to be able to succeed. But if I keep my peace and hold my dignity, then yes, I can make some headway. Thank you. The next question, how do you, all, how do you not resent being kind or giving if it isn't recognized or returned? Um, there was a very interesting situation in which um, a person had asked Daddy Janki this question and many of you, I think, were in touch with her and know her and um, she passed on earlier this year. And Daddy would say that if I'm giving, it's because giving is in my nature. If I'm kind, it's because it's kindness that I want to develop further in my nature so that it's not because of them or what they will do for me that I'm being kind or I'm giving, but it's my nature to be giving, to be kind. And this is the quality I want to carry with me beyond this life. And so I'm not doing it for another. I'm doing it because this is what I would want to develop within myself. This is what is of benefit for me. And so I'm not doing it altruistically and I'm not doing it for the external return. I'm doing it because this is what enhances my own inner being. And I think one of the final last questions this evening, um, I really want all the love I need to be within me but I have no romantic love in my life. Have you any advice? All the mystics of Christianity, of Judaism, of Sufism, of Hinduism, when they've spoken about their love for God and God's love for them, they've often spoken about it in terms of the lover and the beloved. And so, Whatever happens on the external level in physical world, well, see what comes. But the important thing is to be able to not just love God as my mother and father, but also to love God as my friend and to feel that companionship, but also to love God as my beloved and to feel the warmth of that love that God is waiting to share with the soul. And when you begin to feel that pure love, that warmth, I know it will satisfy the soul completely. It's a very powerful and beautiful experience. Thank you. Um, they're just flying in the questions this evening. So the next question is, how do you love yourself when you disappoint yourself again and again? Um, I think that it's important to learn to take power from God. 
um, there isn't any other way I know to be able to change habits. And when I keep disappointing myself, it's because I've got into a habit of doing something again and again. Uh, an addiction, a dependency, um, a weakness, call it what you will. And so whatever it is, whatever is a label, I need spiritual power inside of myself, the power of will, willpower, to be able to change that pattern of behavior. And so when I learn to meditate, I take that power from the divine. And then it's not just a hope that I will change, but literally I can see myself changing as a result of this power, which I did not have before. But now I have it and I can change myself. And as I see that change, then there's this beautiful feeling of gratitude for the one above who's given me this power. But also the door opens to be able to love myself again. Have you personally ever experienced um, this type of self-disappointment or hopelessness? And what did you do if you didn't feel God's love? Um, yes. If I hadn't experienced disappointment in the self, if I hadn't experienced failure and mistakes, I think I would never have developed any sense of humility because otherwise the ego of a human being is huge, but it's our mistakes that make us see where we are truly and understand that, um, but for the grace of God, how could I manage? And so, a, my mistakes have taught me humility, but the other thing has been that I can feel God's love for me. And as I fill myself with that love, then there's also a further determination for transformation on my side that I want to change because of this experience of love. Um, there's a deep desire to give a return for the love that I'm experiencing. And so that's helped me move forward in my journey in a very different way. And um, the person who'd asked the question earlier about um, not having their kindness or um, their well, their good wishes for others being um, returned they're asking something further. They completely agree with you, but it can still be painful not to feel appreciated. Um, yes, I understand that completely. But I also know that the spiritual answer is to be able to know that whatever it is that I do is being seen by the one above. And so the negative that I have, that's visible. I can't hide it from the one above. But equally, the good that I do is also in his book. And I believe very much in the whole subject of karma. And so if I've done good, whether it's acknowledged today or not, it's seeds that have been sown that are going to bring me a return in the future. And so that idea that, yes, there is something being written in the Akashic records, um, it's a whole complicated story about that. But a very simple thing is, I have a good thought for somebody. It's a seed that I've planted. And that's going to come back to me. Think about a boomerang. You throw it, but it comes back. And so whatever it is that I'm putting out, is going to come back to me and that applies to the good but it equally applies to the things that are not so good so it's a great caution for me let me be very careful of the things that are unkind or untrue but let me focus more and more on the good that I can do and everything that I do is definitely going to find its way back to me um 
I know we've come to the end of the session, but there are two questions and I am going to ask you those. First of all, who is your God? Is it Christ? Or who are you describing that has this power? Um, my God is the one God, not just mine or yours, but if I understand and I experience the self, that inner being of light, the soul, then I begin to understand that the supreme soul is also a being of light. That's it, just a being of light for the source of all positive attributes. All the supreme qualities of goodness are there within this being. And so my connection with this being is able to bring to me everything that's there within the divine. And finally, question. Um, if you're overworking and your mind is constantly running, how can one break the cycle and connect more in the heart space to bring balance? Um, a very simple practice, and it's very valuable and effective. Every time you pause for a drink of water or you pause for a bite to eat, and I'm sure you're not a machine, you're not a robot, you, you have to stop. So whenever you do that, just remember that just as the body needs hydration and nourishment, the soul also needs the same. So just take a pause, just for a moment before you hydrate the body. And nobody can tell you, you can't stop to take a drink of water. You just have to do it. And so same thing. In silence, I don't need announcements. I don't need any external preparation. It's just a question of my inner attention and my thoughts. So just a pause before you take your water or your tea or whatever, and you just let yourself go inside and feel the soul and connect with the deep qualities that you have within yourself. Not just a feeling, but you are a being of love. You are a being of peace. Just feel that and then do whatever you need to do. Um, thank you very, very much, Sister Jenty. Um, many, many thank yous for coming through. Um, much appreciation for not just answering the questions, but the sharings that you had with us this evening. Um, and also a quick thank you for all of you joining this evening. And thank you to you for organizing everything and for asking the questions. So thank you to everyone.